Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to share with you seven fragrances that I had previously decluttered but that I have brought back. And what gave me the idea for this video is that I have recently repurchased a few fragrances that I had a while ago and I had decluttered them and for some reason or other I regretted decluttering them. It's a question that I often get from my subscribers is do you ever regret letting go of perfumes? And usually I don't. Usually once I let a perfume go, I'm pretty happy with that decision, but there's definitely been a few that I realized I should not have let them go. So this video is kind of dedicated to that. And I will also be doing a video as well about fragrances that I've had for the longest. So they are kind of holy grails, perfumes that I absolutely love, perfumes that have been here since the beginning essentially. So I thought it was kind of fun to compare and contrast ones that have been like favorites from day one versus fragrances that have really played games with my mind and been sort of up and down. So yeah, if you guys are interested, then definitely keep on watching. And if this is your first time on my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Alithia and on this channel, we do talk a lot about perfumes and if that is is your thing, I would love if you would consider heading on down and subscribing. Feel free to head on over and follow me on Instagram. And with that out of the way, let's dive on into this list. All right, guys, so just a couple of quick thoughts before we get into the fragrances. And as you can see, I am sipping on some coffee here, which is really delightful. And I'm also burning a lavender vanilla candle. Um, so when it comes to fragrances that I have decluttered and repurchased, um, I just want to kind of give a quick little sort of, I don't know if you would want to call it a disclaimer or what, but some Sometimes people are very quick to be a little bit judgy almost or like call you out for things like they'll say oh you decluttered that already and I'm like I know I know <laughs> thank you for reminding me how much money I've wasted I'm fully aware that I have purchased this expensive perfume decluttered it brought it back definitely at a loss not making any money here yeah <laughs> it's people are very quick to like point fingers or like you know say oh my gosh you already did that I just wanted to do a quick forward and say that I'm human you guys this is very much like my perfume sort of journey and some perfumes are going to come some perfumes are going to stay for a while and then go some of them I will regret letting go of some of those perfumes that I regret letting go of I might choose to bring back and so yeah I really don't want to I'm not going to be hard on myself and I would ask that if people have like something rude to say in regard to that just either don't or whatever do because it just helps the algorithm it helps YouTube share my videos so you can leave whatever comments, but, um, you know, just so that people understand, like I'm fully aware that sometimes I can make impulsive decisions. Sometimes I can make rash decisions. Sometimes I regret my decisions. Actually my two worst, um, traits, my, probably my two worst character traits is that I can be both impulsive and indecisive. And those two traits are really bad to have when you do perfume reviews on your channel because perfumes are really expensive. So uh, yeah, definitely sometimes I declutter perfumes and then think, oh shoot, I shouldn't have. And sometimes I purchase perfumes on a whim without thinking it through enough. So but I always want to be honest with you guys. I always want to be totally honest with you guys, share with you exactly my thoughts, where I'm at, how I'm feeling about things, how I'm feeling about certain perfumes. That's half the fun, right? That's the fun of it is going through that journey and discovering what truly, truly works for you and what doesn't. And we're people, right? Like our tastes change over time and a perfume that I didn't like six months ago could very well work for me today. And a perfume that I loved six months or a year ago might not work for me tomorrow. So it's just part of the journey. It's part of the process. Those That's really all I wanted to say. Just a quick little kind of blurb because to be really honest with you guys, sometimes I get anxious before I share perfumes with you, ones that I have brought back or whatever, because I know that there's like somebody sitting out there being judgy. And I've decided I just can't let that get to me anymore. I just can't because otherwise it's going to hinder my ability to make content and to be honest and genuine with you guys. And that's all I ever want to do is you know, share this passion of mine and be honest and genuine. So yeah, with that out of the way, let's get started in these seven fragrances that I had formerly decluttered that have made their way back. And some of them, like I said in the intro, are fairly new and some of them are going to shock the pants off of you. <laughs> so I think I'll leave like the most shocking one until the very, very end. And if you follow me on Instagram, which by the way, if you don't head on over and follow me, but if you follow me on Instagram, you already know 
you already know. Comment down below which one I brought back, because um, I did talk to a couple of my subscribers and told them which one I was thinking of bringing back. So yeah, comment down below, and um, with that, let's get started. Okay guys, so the first fragrance that I had ever decluttered and then brought back, and it is still here, and I still really, really enjoy this one, and I'm still 100% happy that I brought this one back, is Poison Girl from Dior. So this is a delicious, kind of a creamy, almond, vanilla, orange sickle kind of fragrance. Fragrance. It is a little bit, I don't want to say juvenile because I don't like to attribute negative words to fragrances. I think that there's no rules when it comes to fragrance. I think you should wear whatever you like, no matter what your age. However, this one does smell a little bit young sometimes for me, but I still really, really enjoy it. So this has notes of bitter orange, lemon, damask rose, grass rose, orange blossom, vanilla, almond, tonka bean, tolu balsam, sandalwood, cashmere, and, and heliotrope. And yeah, like I said, this one just smells like an orange creamsicle with vanilla and almond in the base and it's sweet it's delicious it's very sexy it's seductive it's playful it's fun it has okay longevity this one here is the eau de parfum concentration definitely recommend getting the eau de parfum over the eau de toilette yeah, i really like this one and i like this one for date nights um sexy nights with my boyfriend just like when it's him and me and you know it's just going to be like a fun flirty kind of night that's when I like to dig this one out and I really um, I really like how long this one lingers like if I spray this on myself in my car or in my bedroom or something when I walk back in a few hours later it still smells like it and it's really nice so that is Poison Girl from Dior number one on my brought back or bring back list. The second one that I have brought back is Clean Skin from Clean Reserve or Skin. I'm not exactly sure what the official name is. I think it's just called Skin. So it is in this beautiful, simplistic looking bottle. I do have a large 100 ml. It literally just smells like you, but better. It smells like your skin. But better so this one I had had a 10 mil travel size I had previously decluttered that one because it was reminding me of work and I do work in healthcare I have a very stressful job sometimes and it just was bringing me negative feelings when I would smell it and I, I just didn't really want it to be associated with work so I had decluttered that one and very quickly after I realized I shouldn't have because I love it I love it I love it I love it I have always loved this one you guys this was an early love for me so this one has praline salt mud tonka bean and leather and it just smells so good and so fresh and clean and nice and just like skin this is what I would imagine your skin would smell like after you've had a shower you've used a really nice body wash and then you've crawled into bed for the night and pushing your nose up against your skin or your partner's skin after that that's what this smells like it's just it just smells like delicious clean skin it's a little bit sweet it's a tiny bit salty it's a little bit musky it's not animalic or anything like that it's just delicious and I love it and this one never fails to get me compliments you guys I wear this one to work still I have allowed myself to continue wearing it to work I always get compliments from patients about this perfume okay guys so the last five fragrances are actually ones that I have purchased within the last month this is Jo Malone Mimosa and Cardamom so this perfume you guys I honestly don't even remember why I decluttered it in the first place I think it was because I found it very headachey and I still sometimes do this is a very potent scent. Um, for the Jo Malone fragrances, this is one of the very long-lasting ones. This is one that actually has very good performance. A lot of Jo Malones don't last a long time. That's no secret. They are an eau de clone concentration. And so they just don't last a very long time. But this is one of the ones that actually has pretty good performance. It can sometimes be a little loud for me and almost like pre-migraine territory. So I do have to be very, very careful with this one. But at the end of the day, this is just one of the best Jo Malone fragrances I think that has ever been made. It smells so good and I just love it. And my boyfriend actually had a bottle of this at his house. I smelled it the other day when I was cleaning his house and I just had to have a bottle back because I remembered how much I truly, truly do love this scent. Um, so this has notes of cardamom, mimosa, and tonka bean. And it just smells incredible. It smells clean, it smells luxurious, it smells bougie, it smells like the inside of an expensive hotel. It just is so good, you guys. I mean, it's unbeatable. I don't think there is anything quite like mimosa and cardamom. It's a very distinguished scent. And if you smell it, you know immediately, or at least I know immediately what it is that I'm smelling. Amazing lasting power. It's a little bit woody. 
It's uplifting, bright, happy. It smells yellow and it also smells a little bit kind of nutty slash almondy um, in the base. And it's just gorgeous. It's just absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, I, I just love it. And as far as Jo Malone goes, I've been really exploring more from the house. And this one is still the one that really stands out to me as being top tier. I don't think I've ever found another Jo Malone that I love as much as the scent. So yeah, as silly as it may have been to have had it, gotten rid of it, brought it back. I don't really care. I want it back. And I want to be honest with you guys and tell you that I brought it back. So this is Mimosa, Mimosa, Mimosa and Cardamom. Okay, you guys. And the next one is one I have not shared with you yet in any video. This one actually just arrived today. And this is Diptyque Eau Duel. Now, you may remember if you've been here for a while that I actually had a bottle of this gifted to me um, a few months ago. I think it might have actually been last fall and it was absolutely beautiful. It was one of the most beautiful vanilla scents I'd ever smelled. It had been a favorite. It still is a favorite. This is one of the best vanillas I've ever smelled. I think the reason that I had decluttered this one was because I had so many vanilla perfumes and this one kind of had fallen to the bottom of my list in terms of my favorite vanillas and I had so many perfumes and I just really wanted to keep my collection kind of concise. But you guys, Eau Du Well from Diptyque is a true masterpiece. It is so gorgeous. I have never smelled anything quite like it. It's extremely comforting. It smells like an enchanted forest with vanilla. It has notes of bourbon vanilla, LME resin, cardamom, juniper, pink pepper, olibanum, black tea, bergamot, ambergris, musk, and saffron. But the main notes that really stick out are those kind of soft, spicy, woody, resinous, juniper type fragrances that really do make you feel as if you were standing in the middle of a forest. A beautiful, calming, ethereal forest. And then there's also this subtle bourbon vanilla in the background and it's delicious and I absolutely love it. So let me take the cap off here. Yeah, it's just incredible, you guys. It's incredible. And I have been getting a lot more interested in the house of Diptyque. I want to explore more from Diptyque. In general, I want my perfume collection to become a little bit more specialized, I guess, for lack of a better word. I want it to become more special. I want it to become more unique, more well-rounded. I want to include a good selection from designer and niche. This, to me, was just like, why on earth would I ever have let this go? Why would I ever have let this go? I don't know. Sometimes... Sometimes we make really bad decisions or really rash decisions and yeah, it's incredible and I love it. And I had a sample sitting up in my office and I tried it the other day and I just fell in love with it all over again and it really rekindled my love for this fragrance. Really beautiful and I definitely recommend checking it out if you haven't. Plus the packaging is stunning. I mean, look at the packaging. It's incredible. And I did get a full 100 ml bottle. Diptyque actually is quite affordable compared to some other fragrances. Um, I really think that you get such good value for money when it comes to the Diptyque fragrances. So yeah, I'm really happy to have this one back. This is one that never should have left. Don't know what I was thinking. The fifth one is another one that I haven't shown you guys because I literally just picked this up the other evening when I went out. And this is Valentino Donna Eau de Parfum. Not Donna Born in Roma, just the original Eau de Parfum. Now this one, you guys, the reason I let this one go when I had the bottle previously is solely due to longevity. It was because I really felt like when I wore this, I had to really try to smell it on myself. And I felt like the longevity and the performance and the sillage was just quite weak. Otherwise, I have always been totally in love with this bottle. I've always loved this fragrance. And I've really been thinking about this one for a while now, remembering how beautiful it was, how soft and feminine and classic it is. And I just really wanted it back. So this one opens with bergamot. It has a mid of iris and Bulgarian rose. And in the base, you have leather, vanilla, and patchouli. So this again is not a dirty, animalic, masculine patchouli. It does, or sorry, not patchouli, leather. It doesn't smell like the interior of a car or like a leather jacket. It's a very subdued, beautiful, powdery, vanillic, feminine leather. And it's absolutely stunning. The only thing that bothers me about this bottle is it does not have a cap on it, so I can't really go up to it and smell it. Although I've been wearing it lately, so I can, I can smell it. But this is like powdery, vanilla, rosy, leathery. It's just so classy. It definitely has that kind of lipstick feel. Um, I really love powdery, lipsticky scents, and this has that, and it is just incredibly classy. 
This is kind of like Valentino Donna Born in Roma's very mature, classy older sister. If Donna Born in Roma is the young, fun, flirty, hot girl who goes to the clubs, this is the more sophisticated, settled down girl who, you know, a beautiful woman has her life together in all ways possible, but she still smells beautiful and feminine, just a little bit less out there and sweet and flirtatious. It's a little more subdued. It's a very classy and comforting fragrance. I would actually put this in the same category as Mangerlan in terms of its classiness and its comfort. Not that it smells like it, but both give me the same vibe. And what I have noticed with this one, because I have been wearing it, I've been determined to wear it, I've been determined to be able to smell it on myself because I love it so much and there's actually a tiny bit missing. I don't know if you can tell that, but if I go crazy with this, like not too crazy, but if I spray generously and I put it on my clothing, I can smell this on my clothing for a long, long time. So on skin, it isn't really strong. It doesn't completely disappear, but it's not really strong. Um, but on clothing, this definitely does hang around and it's stunning you guys like on on my shirt or my sweaters it just smells so beautiful and pretty and vanilla number six on my bring back list is by Rado's gypsy water now this is one that I never really had fallen in love with to begin with this was a blind purchase for me or a semi blind purchase I had smelt it a long time ago didn't really know what I thought about it, didn't really get a full feeling for it, purchased a bottle sort of semi-blindly and was very much on the fence about this one for a long time and I did end up letting it go. And okay, so let me just tell you what it smells like before I get into it. So this is Gypsy Water. This has notes of juniper, lemon, bergamot, pepper, pine needles, incense, orris root, sandalwood, vanilla, and amber. So for starters, I have been searching for that sort of forever Byredo that would be in my collection. I love Byredo. I love them as a house. I think they have a lot of beautiful, natural smelling, very refined smelling fragrances. And I also love the packaging. I'm very much drawn to the black and white minimalist packaging. I think that it looks so aesthetically pleasing. It's beautiful in photos. It's beautiful on a tray. I really love the magnetic cap. You can see it has quite a strong magnetic cap. Um, and I, I just really like the idea of Byredo. So yeah, I might be a little bit influenced by more than just the fragrances. And there is something special and memorable about this one. I was really looking at a lot of the Byredos online. I was revisiting a couple of samples that I had. And you know, this is the one that just kept jumping back out at me as special. There's something about it that is very, very memorable and very beautiful about it. So it's very fresh and it's also very sort of piney and green and it doesn't have amazing performance. That's the only thing. This is kind of comparable almost to a Jo Malone. It might be a little bit longer lasting than Jo Malone. Um, something like Wood Sage and Sea Salt. I think this and Wood Sage and Sea Salt have comparable performance, but this one is just very beautiful and it reminds me of my childhood. This one reminds me of being in a beautiful lush forest after it's rain. My late father used to take myself and my brother camping when we were kids and I spent most of my childhood in British Columbia in Canada because we were camping all the time and I have very very vivid distinct scent memories of waking up in a tent and unzipping the tent and poking my head outside and it was a cool crisp morning and it had just rained or it had rained throughout the night and I could smell pine needles and that green piney foresty air that's what this reminds me of this also has the addition of sandalwood and it has vanilla so it does it does become vanillic on the skin it does become a little bit more perfumey a little bit more feminine it doesn't smell straight up like you've sprayed yourself with pine water or something but there is something special about it I really like it so yeah, so I'm really happy to have this one back. Um, I think it's a must keep. I think it is a classic. I think it's a cult favorite. It, this is very iconic for Byredo. Uh, comment down below if you like Gypsy Water. Also comment down below if you have a favorite Byredo. It's kind of similar to Eau Duel, but Eau Duel is more like, almost like spicy. It's definitely more vanillic. It's more complex. This one is a little bit more piney and a little bit more natural and fresh. Okay, and last but not least, you guys, don't judge me too harshly. This last fragrance has been a whirlwind for me. I have had ups and downs numerous times. It is one that I decluttered and 
shortly after that, I started to really miss it and I started to really appreciate the scent profile. I started to fall in love with Ariana Grande Cloud, which is very similar to this one. You probably already know what it is. I repurchased Baccarat Rouge. Yes, I did. <laughs> Trust me, you guys, I am honestly judging myself more for this than anybody else really needs to. I'm already like, I feel kind of silly because it's a very expensive perfume. I owned it once already. I sold it at a huge loss because I didn't think that I needed it. And I very soon after regretted that. And you know, it's funny because a lot of subscribers will say to me, oh, do you ever regret selling your perfumes or decluttering your perfumes? Do you ever regret letting them go? Usually I don't. Like I'm usually pretty, I usually don't, but there are the odd one that I'm like, shoot, was that too fast? Maybe I should have kept it. So Baccarat Rouge, you guys, not going to talk about what it smells like, not going to go into a whole lot of detail with this one because everybody knows this one, but essentially, again, this is one of those fragrances that, you know, I wish I lived, can I just go off on a tangent? I wish I lived near a department store. I don't live near Holt Renfrew, Neiman Marcus, Macy's, Nordstrom. No, these stores are at least a five hour trip for me to go to. I have zero way to smell any of these higher end except for Lake Designer. There's no way. I, don't, I can't go to a diptyque. I can't go to a Byredo counter. I can't go to an MFK counter. So everything I do is through purchasing and letting go. There's no going back and smelling it two months later or a month later. So anything I want, I have to like physically bring it to myself and they're expensive, right? So if I don't think I like it, then of course I'm going to sell it. I'm not going to hold on to it. I don't know if this is making sense, but so I think that has a lot to do with it because I don't think I would have been so hasty with this one. I probably would have gone to the store, smelled it, gone home, you know, a couple months later, gone back and smelled it and then gone home. I don't think I would have just purchased it. Um, but yeah, in order to have it here on my channel to talk about and to be able to try wearing it, I do have to unfortunately bring a whole bottle here home with me. So yeah, so that's kind of what happened with this one. I had it in my collection and I really didn't get the hype. I really didn't think I needed it. I wasn't wearing it because I was thinking it was very special, special occasion. I became a little bit anosmic to it. It was really annoying me that I had this, you know, $300 bottle of perfume that I was becoming anosmic to. There were so many reasons. There were so many reasons why I thought, do I really need this? I don't know if I need it. I also had Ariana Grande Cloud Intense, which smells very similar. And I thought, well, that one probably is good enough. Why do I need this one? Like so many different reasons, but you guys, Again, again, just like Gypsy Water, just like Eau Du Well, just like Mimosa and Cardamom, there's just something special about this one that is top tier for me. And there just is, there just is. There's something about it that I feel like I was missing once I didn't have it. It's special. And there are a ton of dupes of Baccarat Rouge. There's a ton that are meant to smell like it. There's a ton of inspired versions. There's a ton of other fragrances that smell similar. But let me tell you, the real thing is just always better. It just is. Um, if you can come up with an example of where the dupe is better than the real thing, drop it down below. But honestly, I have not found a dupe that had quite the magic that this has. I have not found a similar or inspired by that has quite the magic. I think it's because these are very expensive ingredients. Um, they, I do believe they use real ambergris in here, whereas in a lot of other fragrances, they use the synthetic version, which is ambroxan. But I think in here it's actual real ambergris, which is very expensive. Ambroxan, by the way, gives me a headache but ambergris doesn't give me a headache. So for some reason, this doesn't give me a headache, but something like another 13 from Le Labo gives me a massive headache. And there's just something luxe about it. There's something that makes me feel like that girl, you know? And I just wanted it back. I wanted it back, what can I say? So I have it back and I fully intend to wear this bad boy. I fully intend to get my money's worth out of it. I'm gonna wear it when on days off. I'm gonna wear it when I wanna feel luxurious. I'm gonna wear it on a date. I'm gonna wear it when I go on vacation. I'm gonna wear it and I'm happy to have it. So yeah, that is the last one in today's video. Um, let me know your thoughts down below, you guys. How do you feel about Baccarat Rouge? And has it played 
the same sort of mind games with you or were you like a love right from the get-go or were you a dislike right from the get-go? All right, you guys, so that is it. Those are all the fragrances that I have previously decluttered and brought back and I just really love all of the ones that are sitting here in front of me. I think there's something very special about each of them or they're ones that are very easy likes for me or easy loves for me. Um, and I'm really happy to have them. And I think it looks very well-rounded. I think that there's some good affordable ones in here. There's a couple of really nice designer ones. There's a couple that are more middle ground. And then there's a couple that are a little bit more expensive. And um, yeah, I'm just, I'm really happy to have all of these back. I, I truly think that I have some of the best perfumes on the planet sitting right here in front of us. And I don't mean that to sound like in a bragging way or whatever, but I truly think that um, through all of my purchases and all of my blind buys and my discoveries and everything else, I truly feel like I have chosen some of the very best that you can find um, out there and I'm really happy to have all of them. So yeah, that's really it for today's video, you guys. Um, let me know down below your thoughts. Let's chat. Um, again, please don't judge too harshly. Trust me, your girl is judging herself already <laughs> for spending money and then spending it again and then spending it again. Um, but yeah, that's it for today's video, you guys. I will see you all very soon. So that was it for today's video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, don't forget to check out the video that will be about perfumes that I have had pretty much since inception of my channel or perfumes that I've had for many years that I still am totally head over heels in love with. And that's about it for today, you guys. So I'll see you all very soon in my next video and bye for now.